Hello, my name is Aubrey. I'm so glad you're here. Let's talk about the Letters of Enchantment duology by Rebecca Ross. This is a lovely YA duology with a World War I, World War II type backdrop, but instead of a war between countries, it's a war between gods. We're following two characters, both of which are budding columnists at the Oath Gazette, vying for the same columnist promotion. First of all, we have Iris, who is struggling greatly with her home life. Her brother Forrest was called upon by a goddess and has left to join the war effort. Neither her nor her mother have heard from him, and they have no idea if he's even alive. And as a result, her mother has started drinking, and Iris has had to step up and basically become the adult. We're also following Roman Kit, Iris's work rival. Roman is considerably more well-off than Iris. He comes from a much more privileged family. However, he has a very difficult relationship with his father, and more specifically, his father's demanding and rigid expectations of him. They both have strong motivations for wanting the columnist promotion. If Iris can get the promotion, the extra money would go a long way in being able to provide for her and her mother. And in Roman's case, his father has basically told him that if he can't get the columnist position, on his own, then he's gonna be bribed into the position, and this doesn't sit well with Roman. He wants to earn the promotion himself. The two butt heads at work frequently, as rivals tend to do. They watch each other closely and scour each other's articles looking for mistakes or ways to one-up the other in the eyes of their boss. Each night, Iris goes home, and alone in her bedroom, she writes letters pouring her heart out to her brother Forrest. She types them out on her grandmother's old typewriter and she slips them underneath her wardrobe door where they disappear. Forrest has never once written her back and she's not even sure that these letters are getting to him, but she feels compelled to write them anyway. That is, until one day she does get a letter back that reads simply, this isn't Forrest. Who is this mysterious person who has been receiving her letters? Well, the readers know that it is, of course, none other than Roman Kit. <laughs> Some kind of mysterious magic has connected the two of them, and they begin writing anonymous letters to each other, and God damn it, if this isn't one of the sweetest and most romantic books that I have ever read. I smiled, I giggled, I kicked my feet like a giddy fucking schoolgirl. Watching these two characters fall in love was an absolute joy. It's the kind of book that I wish I could just wipe from my memory so that I could read it for the first time all over again. Both Iris and Roman are so lovely and earnest. Iris is brave and fiery and passionate. Roman starts off kind of disgruntled and resigned to live whatever life his father has carved out for him, but throughout the story we see him grow so much. The side characters are also wonderfully charming and lovable. The World War setting felt surprisingly fresh for a YA fantasy book, and I think added a lot of texture and atmosphere. The plot, at least for me, had a wonderfully readable quality. It's not a breakneck thriller by any means, but even still, I couldn't help but just keep turning the pages, uh, dying to know what was gonna happen next. I also enjoy Rebecca Ross's writing quite a lot. This is my second and third novel by her, I have really come to enjoy her writing style. It's lovely and soft and atmospheric. I feel like it's very cozy and I don't fully know how to explain that, so you'll just have to take my word for it. All in all, I think this duology is a real gem in the YA fantasy space. It's sweet, it's earnest, it's addictive. I gave Divine Rivals 5 out of 5 stars, truly I was so taken with this. And I gave Ruthless Vows 4 stars, I didn't love it quite as much as the first one, uh, it's a lot more plot and way less romance, but even still, I think it wrapped up the story really well. And the fantasy world building elements and the larger conflict were definitely still interesting to read about. I'd give the whole duology a 4.5 stars. If you've been eyeing the series because of the hype, I think it lives up to it. It's not loud or flashy, it's not a fast paced thriller but it will melt your heart and it will make you believe in young love. I sincerely hope that you'll check it out for yourself and if you've already read it, feel free to leave your spoiler-free thoughts about it in the comments below. If you're looking for more YA fantasy recommendations, then I think you should check out my review for The Remnant Chronicles, which I will leave 
right here for your viewing pleasure. Please like this video if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more from me. I hope to see you next time. Bye!